Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Yesterday I bought the most stocks I have ever bought in my life in a single day. I bought over 1.1 million dollars in stocks just yesterday. And that sounds like a lot, but when you realize that Elon Musk just became the richest man in the world, richer than Jeff Bezos, it doesn't seem like a lot anymore. <laughs> Uh, in this video though, I'm going to give you a quick and dirty overview as to which stocks I bought, a brief overview as to why it's not going to be super uh, detailed into every stock, but I think it'll give you some uh, lighthearted and, and uh, easy to follow insights into why I made these purchases. By the way, nine out of the 10 purchases I made, I made yesterday with course members live at the market open. Yesterday was a really special day. We had big plans for going shopping depending on what happened yesterday. And thank you to all of those of you who joined looking at the market. We did really well yesterday. Every stock we bought is up. Yay. <laughs> and hey, always remember that coupon code is linked down below, but it does expire tomorrow for joining the programs. So check those out in the links down below. All right, let's get started. First up, Enphase. This is one of my favorite highest conviction stocks that I have. Uh, Enphase to me, and, and a lot of people don't see it this way, but to me, Enphase is a competitor to Tesla in the home energy space. Uh, specifically, the uh, the power wall space, like the home energy storage space, but also competes indirectly with Tesla Solar. See, when people think about getting solar, a lot of people price shop and they get different opinions. They talk to local companies, they talk to local big companies, and then they talk to Tesla. Not always, but a lot of people do. When people tend to shop Tesla, if Tesla's available in their area, Tesla Solar, uh, because y'all know I'm a big Tesla bull, so I always make things some, well, especially in competing spaces relative to Tesla. But when people shop Tesla against other companies, oftentimes the local solar companies, and I've been personally pitched this, uh, will, will pitch Enphase as an alternative to the products that Tesla uses. They argue that uh, Enphase's solar micro inverters that let you individually manage each individual solar panel are a higher quality system than Tesla's systems. And they respond to shade better and they respond to these scenarios much better than maybe Tesla systems can. Tesla responds to this and says, no, that's not necessary. That's too expensive. You don't need all this extra technology. But what I like is a competing sales pitch. Anytime I get companies in industries that I like that have these kind of clashing sales pitches, I don't have to pick a side. I can pick both because they're both in an industry that I love and they're my favorite top dogs out of the companies in the industry. Like there's, let's put it this way. There are some solar companies that I think are pretty shady and I'm not gonna bag on them in this video. I've bagged on them plenty of times before. You can you can see, uh, uh, look up um, uh, Tesla solar scammels, okay? The video does not actually bag on Tesla, but if you watch that, you'll get some more insights into why I think some companies are shady. Uh, yeah, and that's scammels instead of panel. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, so it's, you know, honestly to me, it's kind of like, why do I buy Tesla and Neo? They're both in the same electric vehicle space, but they kind of compete for a slightly different audience. So I like having both of them. In this case, you know, Neo versus Tesla, it's battery swapping versus not. And I really don't think Tesla's ever going to just, all right, we're gonna go back into battery swapping. I, I don't see it happening because they're so focused on structural batteries. Anyway, uh, Enphase, high quality company. I'm actually an Enphase customer. Uh, take a look at the this screen right here. So apparently I have uh, produced uh, 43.8 megawatts of energy over the last uh, four, four and a half years here. Uh, and that is enough to save 793 trees. Now, not exactly sure how they come up with that calculation, but anyway, it's interesting. I really like this and I'm not liking the, this app or this company because they have an app. I, I mean, it is cool. Look, here's my array. Yay. Uh, but, uh, but, and, and see how I could see the individual production of every little panel. That's sort of the micro inverter stuff. Look, we don't have to get into all the details here. The point is love the company, love how they compete with Tesla from a fundamental analysis point of view as well. The growth here is going to be nuts. It is going to beat expectations. And to me, this company is a buy any day under $200 a share. Now I snuck in with my last purchase yesterday at 198, about $160,388 
uh, worth of, of Enfei shares. Uh, it's a high quality company, lots of growth ahead of it. It's slightly above 200 now, uh, so you pay a little bit of a premium above my price target, but uh, I think there's so much growth ahead. This is a great stock. You gotta own it. You gotta have it in your portfolio. Then I bought Quantum Scape. Okay, now this is a roulette wheel purchase. So if Enphase is like low risk, not as low risk as like a cash park like Microsoft, but it's, it's low risk with good growth, Quantum Scape is the polar opposite. This is literally you walking into a casino and going, all on black, boys and girls. <laughs> uh, this is a very, very high risk stock. And because of that, I bought a $32,749. Uh, not obviously as much as I bought in Enphase. I bought 5X that in Enphase. Be, be warned, okay? This stock goes 50% up and 50% down. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. Day traders play this stock all day long. But QuantumScape is really notable uh, for its battery technology, its solid state battery technology. Now they don't actually have a functioning battery and that's a real risk for this company. Like they don't, and this is the crazy thing about the SPAC market is, is they don't actually sell anything yet. I'm gonna pull up another purchase here in just a moment so I can show you. But they, they don't actually sell anything yet. <laughs> they have research into a solid state batteries that they suggest could uh, be much more efficient, lighter and cost effective than any other other uh, batteries that currently exist on the market, like the future of battery technology, people say is, oh my gosh, we need solid state. Uh, and But, you know, unfortunately with QuantumScape, they're probably not going to have an actual functional battery in a vehicle until like 2024. Uh, but by then, the world of batteries is going to be vastly different here. And we don't know if that world includes QuantumScape or not. It's kind of like a nano dimension uh, purchase here. Like nano dimension, Love the company, love the vision, but you know, 3D printed circuitry uh, at, at mass scale, we, we don't have that yet. You know, we have research institutions buying or interested in even companies like QuantumScape or Microvision or NanoDimension. And that's what makes these companies very risky is the research value is 10 out of 10. The enterprise value, like not the, you know, stock calculation enterprise value, but the actual value that the company can provide is right now like next to nothing because they sell research products or they do research, right? So that that's what makes this to me a call option. Uh, it's not, it's, it's just a stock purchase, but I can't buy uh, a call option four years out and I know I could trade it, I don't wanna do that. So I just put $32,000 into this stock and my view is this is like a four to five to six year call option on the company. I'm gonna set it and it's either gonna expire worthless or it's gonna go big. So be careful with this one, but it's interesting. Then I bought Google. So if QuantumScape is a 10 on the risk score, like way risky, Google is uh, like a one. <laughs> it, is, it is a cash park, pretty dang low risk. It has the lowest likelihood of the highest returns out of all of these, but it is a hidden gem because of YouTube ad revenue. So many of you know that in addition to the stock course and the real estate course, I also sell a YouTube creator course. It's been extremely popular. I was blown away with how popular it was even relative to the other courses. But the YouTube ad revenue space, holy smokes, it is exploding. Let me put it this way. Uh, type into YouTube how much YouTube paid me in May or how much YouTube paid me, Kevin, in May. Uh, you should see a video of how much money I made in, in May. And it was like, you, you should watch it, but it was like 250K in a month. It's insane. And I'm not valuing Google just based on this. This is just anecdotal evidence here, right? Uh, let's just say in December, that number got dwarfed. And the fact that YouTube has so much money to pay out, and sure my views went up, but the fact that YouTube has so much money to pay out, it makes me really think there's a there's quite a real potential that Wall Street is somewhat turning a blind eye to the potential that YouTube has on behalf of all of Google, uh, which is incredible because Google's a massive company. This is why I kind of call it a cash park. But to me, it's a cash park with, with that spark. It's kind of like, it's actually even more of a spark than the Apple car would be for Apple. Like you buy Apple, it's a great company, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna grow like uh, like a Tesla is gonna grow over the next five years. Probably not, at least. Uh, Google, on the other hand, w w rather than waiting for that Apple car, and sure they got the Waymo car too, that YouTube ad revenue potentially undervalued sector of Google, and that could end up leading Google's earnings per share to substantially beat Wall Street estimates for the foreseeable future. And I'll let you know, if I start complaining about ad rev, you know, maybe, maybe that'll be a, a turning point. But right now it's like, 
we get excited about stocks going parabolic, YouTube, the amount of money they pay out, that's what's going parabolic. So that, that's gotta be good for the stock. Now, obviously I fundamentally analyzed Google as well. I call it a cash park because, you know, the growth is there. It's much slower than the other companies. To me, it's a safe company. It's a relatively safe company to invest in. Google, Apple, Microsoft, great companies, relatively safe companies to invest in. So I put $76,065 into Google. Then I'm gonna pull up something else. This is, uh, this is a little interesting. So I bought what I call the Biden pie. The Biden pie, one of the things I like about these little pies on M1 Finance is there's, there's no fee to make your own pie. So it's kind of like you get to make your own little ETF uh, <laughs> without having uh, you know management fees in that. But uh, let's go ahead and pull up the Biden pie here. And you could see this yourself by going to metkevin.com slash Biden. That's probably the easiest way to follow along. So go to metkevin.com slash Biden and uh, you will see this as well. If you click invest in this pie, uh, you don't actually have to invest in the pie, but you can make an account with M1 Finance uh, if you want. And I think right now they're doing a referral bonus, uh, whatever it is you would get, but I'm not sure if it's 10 or 20 or $30, something like that, but usually they have a bonus. Whatever bonus they have, if you click that link, you end up getting it and you don't actually have to invest in that individual pie. But anyway, here it is. Uh, so the Biden pie, I just made this yesterday. Uh, today it's up 4.8%, which, which is amazing. But uh, I put $225,000 uh, into this. Right now it's sitting at $231,600. And anyway, uh, Tesla stock is 25% of this pie. Enphase is 20% of this pie. Neo is 15% of this pie. Then I threw in the cannabis. So look, we got Tesla 25%, right? I wanted to get cannabis up there as well with, with some diversification. So I got Aurora, uh, Aurora Cannabis here at eight, Canopy Growth at eight, uh, and then I threw uh, the cannabis ETF in here as well at eight. So that gives me about 24% exposure to cannabis in this pie. Uh, then I also threw in the Invesco Solar ETF because aside from Tesla and Enphase, I don't love the other solar companies. I don't understand them as well, but I know the sector is going to do great. So it's really my play on the sector. So this entire Biden play here is literally energy, electric vehicles, and cannabis. That's it. That's literally it. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to keep adding to the Biden pie, uh, but uh, I, I'm tempted to add more to the Biden pie. Uh, but that might only be because it went up 5% the very next day <laughs> as, as a pie, uh, which, which is incredible because every individual stock here uh, is up. Uh, but again, you, you can't guarantee that things are just gonna go to the moon forever. Uh, and, and at some point, prices will fall. So keep that in mind as an investor, obviously. Okay, now the next thing that I did is I uh, put, uh, I had $56,000 of uh, additional cash in my M1 finance. So what I did is I invested that money into uh, meetkevin.com slash 1337V19. Okay, V19, so 1337V19. This is kind of like, this is my version of the S&P 500. I talk about this almost every day in, in the course and I answer questions about this and we change allocations. I walk you through how and why I'm changing the allocations. Uh, we do this pretty regularly. Uh, and, and the cool thing is everybody can make their own little adjustments the way they want because M1 Finance gives us that luxury. So uh, 1337V19 is up 3.7% today. I've got about $1.1 million parked in this. Yesterday I put $56,000 into this. But what's cool is I actually have multiple pies within this pie. Uh, and the biggest ones here right now are the EV space, consumer online tech, uh, uh, growth tech, safer tech. And then I get into like growth, housing, you know, FinTech, uh, 5G growth and things like that. Uh, but I'll just give you a quick example. Again, go to metkevin.com slash 1337V19 to see this in detail so you can scroll around through this. But uh, so I put 56K in this and what that does is it automatically divides some of the money into, again, Tesla, Enphase, Neo, Xping, Liano, Ty Fraction, and goes into like Fisker. But then I also get into Etsy, Lemonade, Peloton, Pinterest, Shift, Shopify, Tattooed Chef. Uh, you know, we can jump over here uh, to the FinTech, for example, you get the Square and PayPal and so on. And, and it, it automatically distributes that kind of funding, which I really enjoy that about uh, about M1 Finance because <laughs> you, you, can, you can click buy 
and it automatically divides it all out for you as opposed to having to buy the S&P 500 where you're getting more uh, cigarette stocks than you're getting Starbucks and Target, which is nuts in my opinion. Uh, now, this is pretty tech-centric, but it's one of my favorites. Okay, uh, then, uh, and then I do have some other pies as well. Like I got a, uh, well, we don't have to go into all the other pies now. The other pies we could talk about for a different day. Uh, but after that, I went on and I spent $75,999 on Tesla. In my opinion, if you can buy Tesla under $800, do it. Uh, t now, obviously, no guarantees. This thing could fall back to 300 again, uh, which honestly would be somewhat welcomed because I'd be able to go shopping for it again, which would be nice. But I also did kind of just blow all my money, so maybe that wouldn't be a good thing. Uh, now, right now, Tesla is uh, is sitting at a, a price of, oh my gosh, $795 at the time of this recording. Here's Weeble. Here's the Weeble is. When I'm buying individual stocks, I almost exclusively use uh, Webull. Sometimes I use Robinhood too, but Robinhood mostly for options. But anyway, 795 is where uh, Webull is sitting right now, which is, uh, or Tesla is sitting right now, which is incredible. But anyway, to me, if we can get this under 800, that's great. But after that, I can't buy this stock individually anymore yesterday. So yesterday, or at all, uh, I can't buy Tesla anymore <laughs> individually. But uh, yesterday, I did spend $75,999 on Tesla. Uh, now, my four-year target for them is about 1337, uh, and I'm pretty conservative with that number. I, I think it'll double in about four years. Uh, at this rate, though, it could happen sooner. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, next up, I have a substantial position in these next two stocks. These next two stocks uh, are stocks that sold off after the Georgia election, and I told all my course member folks, hey, look, tech and consumers these are going to sell off if Georgia goes to Democrats, but I think it's going to be temporary. It's going to be sort of a buy the dip. It's going to balance off the dip once people realize, ah, we should just buy those. That's kind of what happened. Anyway, uh, I did buy, yeah, as part of this, I bought uh, $67,130 of Etsy. It's one of my largest portfolio holdings, along with Amazon and Apple. I did not buy any Amazon yesterday, though. I just bought $67,130 of Etsy. Uh, it is, uh, it's got a tiny market cap relative to Amazon, which makes it much easier to beat Wall Street estimates and move the needle. Uh, not that necessarily those things are related, but those are my bottom lines. I think Etsy's going to uh, beat Wall Street estimates, and it's way easier to move the needle. And you can also, if you type into YouTube, uh, meet Kevin, two must-own stocks. You'll see my comparison between Wayfair and Etsy, and it's definitely a watch if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, I did also spend $50,807 on Apple stock. A little bit of a cash park here. I'm not going to go into so much super detail here on Apple because next up, we got to talk about Planet 13. So I just spent a bunch of money buying Planet 13. A few days ago, I made a video saying that I'm eyeing this stock if Democrats win, and Democrats won, so I bought it. Now, with a Democratic sweep, while there are no guarantees of a marijuana decriminalization, the writing is on the wall. In California, people are stepping over each other to get pot, uh, to get basically get into pot-zoned commercial districts and set up distribution warehouses, storefronts. They're paying insane rents, and to me, $250,000, which is what I spend on this, uh, is a mega call option on uh, probably a kind of risky, risky industry. I'll, I'll pull up my purchase so you can see it. Uh, see what my holding is in it. it, it it's a mega call option, but uh, it, and it's a it is a stock purchase. So when I say sometimes when I say call option, I say it's like it's basically a long bet on the future, longer than what I could do with a specific call right now. And one of the things I have to say I hate about call options is at some point I get forced to realize my gains and you know transfer those into actual shares of the company. I just had to do that with some lemonade options. Uh, which I shared with course members as well in the live stream. We actually did it live together. But uh, yeah, I, I don't like that because I get forced into realizing gains and it gives me less flexibility as to when I when I recognize uh, taxes or realize taxes uh, or realize profits which cause taxes. Uh, so anyway, to me, Planet 13, it's a risky bet. I've made a very detailed video on this back when it was like a $2 stock. I put $14,000 uh, into the company back then because I said the regulatory risk was too high with Mitch McConnell around, uh, potentially for the next eight years. Uh, I, I just, 
I, I thought it was too much of a risk. What now Mitch McConnell is not around. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, uh, I ended up uh, putting putting some, uh, some money into the planet here. Uh, I don't actually know if I can easily pull up my, uh, my position here. Okay, so I'll just read it off. I've got 41,400. Oh, here we go. Okay, yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, okay, I can do this. So here we go. So I've got 41,400 shares of a Planet 13. Uh, my, my total acquisition price, or my average cost basis in that, is 597. I really want to be in this under $6. I don't know that it's moved much since then. <laughs> I'll pull it up really quick. Uh, it's okay. It's at 599 now. Yeah, good, good job, Kevin. I'm up two cents on that one. Uh, although it does say I'm up 20 grand, so I, oh no, that's, that's the current price quote. That's not what I'm currently, uh, that's not what my basis is in the company. Oh, okay, sorry, I misread TD Ameritrade. My basis is, uh, $5.60. That explains why I'm up. Uh, okay, so my basis is $5.60 on that. I like this one under six for now, but uh, really, really good optionality here for, for future growth into this industry. But there are two main big risks. If you watch my video, which you can look up, meet Kevin Planet 13, you'll see it. Uh, people didn't get notifications for it as usual, thanks YouTube. But maybe because it was a, you know, Mara stock. But anyway, uh, you know, back then, I thought the two biggest risks were regulatory, again, Mitch McConnell, and employee risks, employee-centric businesses, which, it's pretty much what Planet 13 is right now, at least until they scale. They make me a little nervous because it's very difficult to get to scale uh, and, and have a, a nice profit margin. So you gotta be careful. It's kind of like investing in the restaurant business, very low margin. Uh, but with the removal of this regulatory risk, it's worth me throwing in that 250K, at least I thought so. All right, after that, I bought uh, Neo. I bought, uh, what did I buy of NEO? I, whatever the balance is of, well, no, not the balance, because I bought NEO shares, and I also bought a call option of NEO. So I'll give you the details here of what I bought. NEO, did, NEO was interesting. Uh, when I bought it, it was uh, slightly, it was kind of flat yesterday, I feel like, when we bought it. Uh, it did sell off into the close yesterday, but then it's back up 4% today, so it's kind of flat from yesterday. So I bought it for, uh, I bought 1,000 shares for $54,160. Uh, right now it's actually trading for, it looks like 5370. So a few pennies here under what I bought it for, or actually close to a dollar under what I bought it for. Uh, oh, it's up 6% right now. I really like NEO. We've got NEO Day coming up. I made a NEO video yesterday uh, talking about this. I also bought a NEO call option on Robinhood. Uh, I had some cash sitting around in Robinhood, so I threw a NEO call in. And I've got most of my calls are over at Robinhood. Now, I am down on that. I'll go ahead and pull that up really quick. I am down on my NEO option. Right now, I'm down. I bought a $65 strike price, January 20th, 23 call. I bought 20 of those. So I'm down about 3 k on that. Uh, although that's narrowing now that that Neo is is bouncing back off its dip yesterday, uh, but I had also previously bought a sixty dollar Neo call and that's up about twenty seven hundred. Uh, my so far my XPF calls down a little bit, uh, but yeah. Anyway, so these these are um, th these are my purchases. This is where I spent money yesterday. I just want to. I uh, always want to be as transparent as possible, try to provide as much value as possible. If you ever want to ask me questions or you, you want to see me as I do these trades either live or before I do them, uh, check out the course down below, the Stocks and Psychology and Money course. I mean, you, you also see there's a course uh, for real estate investing, the YouTube course, sales course. You could bundle these up if you want. Whatever you do, just make sure to use that coupon code. It's linked down below. Uh, it, uh, it does expire tomorrow, or at least the price will change. And uh, folks, thank you so much for being here. We will see you in the very next video. Thanks again. Bye.